In this tutorial, we'll look at some common questions in the topic of maintaining air quality. There are a few important parts to this chapter, first and foremost being the components of air. So you need to know what gases are present in air in roughly what percentages. Next, we need to learn about the six pollutant gases, the sources of each pollutant and the effects of each pollutant. The next part, the next important part would be how we treat the pollutant gases. How can we remove the pollutant gases? And then the last two parts will be on ozone layer and CFCs as well as carbon cycle and global warming. So for this question, we are tested on the percentage of oxygen in air. So the thing to recall is that in clean air or in air, we have roughly 20% of oxygen. So in this diagram, what is happening is that the candle undergoes combustion and combustion means that it will react with the oxygen in air. So after the reaction, your oxygen will be removed, meaning the volume of air will actually reduce reduce by how much it will be reduced by 20 percent or another way of looking at it would be that there will be 80 percent of the gas remaining after combustion so in the correct option would one it will be the one where you have roughly 80 percent of the air remaining after burning this question again is testing you on the knowledge of the percentage of oxygen in air. What has happened is that when you pass the gas repeatedly over heated iron, the iron is going to react with your oxygen in air. So after when there's no further decrease in volume, it means that all your oxygen has been used up. The original sample original volume is 80. So the final volume again would be roughly 80% of the initial volume and that would give us 64 centimeter cube. For this question, we are looking at how we can separate the gases in air. So um, it's a pretty standard procedure. First, you need to liquefy your air. So you need to cool it down to low enough temperatures to convert it into a liquid and then after that you will heat the liquid mixture and what happens is that the gases the components in air have different boiling points so the gas with the lowest boiling point will be distilled first For this question, we are looking at pollutants or specifically the source of the different pollutants. And in this question, the two pollutants that we're looking at would be methane and sulfur dioxide. So you need to recall that methane is obtained from the waste gas of cows or from decaying plants. And for sulfur dioxide, there are two sources one is man-made the other one is natural natural one would be your volcanoes and your man-made one would be from the flue gases um, in factories or the waste gases in factories so over here that would mean that b is the correct answer now photochemical reactions actually produce your ozone which is another pollutant so once again this is a classic question where we test you on the sources and effects of a particular pollutant the pollutant here is carbon monoxide so how is the gas produced you need to mention very importantly the keyword here is incomplete combustion of your carbon containing fuels or your crude oil or petroleum Describe one effect of carbon monoxide on human health. You need to mention that it combines with hemoglobin in blood. And what happens when it combines with hemoglobin in blood is that it prevents or reduces the ability to carry oxygen. 
right? For the effect of carbon monoxide, you need to be specific. Try not to give vague answers like headaches or, or um, death. So for carbon monoxide, be specific to tell us how carbon dioxide actually reacts with hemoglobin in the blood and it reduces the ability of blood to carry oxygen to other parts of the body. So for this question, the pollutant that we are looking at would be your nitrogen oxides or your oxides of nitrogen. So the question in part 2 is talking about how we can remove or how the catalytic converter helps to remove oxides of nitrogen. For that, it's a very specific reaction that happens. Your nitrogen monoxide will actually react with carbon monoxide in the catalytic converter converting it to carbon dioxide and nitrogen gas now this equation is frequently tested because it's also a redox reaction so we can actually test you on you know what is the oxidizing agent what's the reducing agent what is the change in oxidation number so in this particular reaction your oxides of nitrogen or your nitrogen monoxide is actually reduced to the harmless gas of nitrogen for part three one other source of nitrogen oxides in the atmosphere similar to your sulfur dioxide oxides of nitrogen there are two sources one is man-made the other one is in nature the man-made one is in your car exhaust or your car internal combustion engines the other one the natural one would be your lightning activity for this question we are looking at another pollutant and the question tells you that fossil fuels contain small amounts of sulfur so what happens when we burn fossil fuels containing sulfur is that we get your sulfur dioxide so describe how the combustion of fossil fuels leads to the formation of acid rain is that it will produce your sulfur dioxide then sulfur dioxide will be oxidized in air to give sulfur trioxide and your sulfur trioxide is going to be is going to be dissolved in your rainwater to form sulfuric acid. So that is how acid rain is actually formed. Describe an effect of acid rain on buildings. It will corrode your limestone buildings or metal buildings. For this question, we are looking at the removal of the pollutant gases. There are two, 2.5 methods in the syllabus. The first method is the catalytic converter that we have seen earlier, which will remove your carbon monoxide and it removes your nitrogen monoxide. The other method would be your flue gas desulfurization. In flue gas desulfurization, we actually use calcium carbonate to react with your sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide being an acidic gas will react with carbonates. So for this question, the gases that will be removed by calcium carbonate will be the acidic gases or the reverse, the gas that will not be removed by calcium carbonate would be a neutral gas. So from the four options, if we recall the knowledge of non-metal oxides, your CO and OH2O are neutral, so A would be the option. Now earlier I mentioned that there are 2.5 ways for the removal of the pollutant gases. The 0.5 way is not exactly removing the pollutant but it's reducing the effect of the pollutant gases and the method is called liming. Liming is essentially the adding of calcium carbonate to water, to soil, to neutralize the acid uh, the acid rain or the acidic soil that's caused from acid rain so the three methods or the 2.5 methods again would be your catalytic converter your flue gas desulfurization as well as liming once again we are looking at a catalytic converter so which change does not occur in a catalytic converter it's useful for you now to recall that catalytic converter removes your 
carbon monoxide, it removes your nitrogen oxides, it removes your unburned hydrocarbons. So as mentioned in the catalytic converter, your carbon monoxide is removed, your oxides of nitrogen are uh, removed and your unburned hydrocarbons are removed so these reactions occur inside the catalytic converter the one that doesn't occur would be the removal of co2 in fact co2 is formed in the catalytic converter next we look at the ozone depletion or chlorofluorocarbons so what actually happens or the important thing to know about this part is that in chlorofluorocarbons the atom that's responsible for reacting with ozone is your chlorine atom okay what chlorine atom does is that it will convert your ozone to oxygen gas so this is the equation but we need to balance it so it looks like this okay the actual mechanism or the actual reactions that happen i don't think it's in syllabus but it's good to know your ozone reacts with chlorine atom as mentioned to form clo and o2 your clo then goes on to react with another ozone to form cl plus 2o2 okay so over here you can see that your chlorine your chlorine atom is actually only a catalyst in the reaction okay it's chemically unchanged that also means that we just need a small amount of chlorine to destroy thousands of ozone molecules because we call this a chain reaction so once your chlorine atom is formed it's highly unstable we call it a radical it's going to react with many many uh, ozone molecules because it's regenerated at the end of every reaction for this question we are looking at the carbon cycle so the essential thing to remember about carbon cycle is that there are processes in nature that produces co2 and there are processes in nature that take in co2 so these processes or the amount of co2 given out and taken in is actually cancelled out so there's no net change or the amount of co2 in the atmosphere is actually maintained at a constant level so this is called your carbon cycle now one reaction or one process that produces co2 is respiration so the equation for respiration is the opposite for photosynthesis for respiration glucose would react with oxygen to give you carbon dioxide and water now even though the processes counters one and uh, one another to maintain the level of co2 but over time we find that the overproduction of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane actually causes a phenomenon known as global warming so you in the syllabus we need to know some effects of global warming like rising sea levels like climate change like desertification um, ocean acidification so you need to know some of these effects of global warming now for part two how would carbon cycle regulate the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere once again you need to mention certain processes that give out carbon dioxide like respiration and at the same time you have photosynthesis which is a process that takes in carbon dioxide so the two effects the two processes counters each other it regulates the amount of carbon dioxide in the air so this is the answer given by cambridge so once again photosynthesis we need you need to identify a process that absorbs carbon dioxide a process that releases carbon dioxide and then you have to mention the fact that they are counter or they are cancelling each other uh, the effect of each other 